We are going to extrude the core that we collected yesterday uh, into one centimeter intervals. Okay. You can see it's still nicely intact, well stored with that Zorbitrol yep. surface. So the whole idea here is uh, we now are going to extrude the core uh, upward and we're going to scrape off sediments from the top Okay. Uh, as we lower this a centimeter at a time. Since I'm going to calibrate to one centimeter, I am going to uh, loosen this so that it drops down approximately one centimeter. Okay. It's pretty close. Now we've got the spacer calibrated to one centimeter. So every time we drop this down, it's going to push the sediments up one centimeter at a time. So you notice if I lower this bottom one down, I loosen it, drops down one centimeter, tighten it, loosen the upper one, drops down one centimeter, and then that will push sediments up, but it's not going to push right now because it's capped on top. So this is the tray for extruding, so I, I'm just going to put this on top and it tightens onto the, uh, um, onto the tube so that we can extrude the sediments up and whenever the sediments come up out of the hole we can scrape them off into bottles. First thing we're going to do is get rid of all of this layer of Zorbitrol that's solidified at the top. Got it going? Yep. And so you'll see that push down here. Yeah. That's all the Zorbitrol stuff, and we want to get rid of that. Okay. So that's the basically the solidified lake water that was at that sediment sediment uh, water interface. And we want to just scrape that off and do an, another couple of centimeters. basically there. Okay, so we are now at our surface okay. and uh, we can start extruding our uh, sediment intervals. And sure, so let's do the first centimeter of sediment. Lower one centimeter for me. And here it comes. See, it has, still has a little bit of that Zorbitrol in it, but uh, now we can scrape off the mud. And there you have it. Okay. That represents our first interval, what we call our zero to one, and then uh, we gradually extrude this interval by interval till we get all the way to the bottom and we'll have a, uh, a separate vial for all of these and then we can start doing our sediment dating uh, and our biological and chemical analyses and all of that stuff. Okay. Whenever we collect these samples and we extrude them then we start to do the processing for chemical parameters and, and, and physical parameters and biological parameters and one of the uh, main biological variables that we examine in the sediments are the actual remains of the algae and they are basically the, the most powerful tool in our paleo-limnological arsenal to tell us about the past and if you think about it it makes sense we want to uh, look at the biology of the system because that reflects the environmental health the uh, organisms that live in the system will give you information about how well that system is doing because they are uh, always living in it, 
uh, depending on the species that you find, that provides a reflection of the actual condition of the environment. And the algae are particularly good because they respond quickly to changes in variables like pollution or nutrients or ions and other things that are going on. Turbidity, water clarity, and so on are all things that can determine uh, what species you'll find in an environment. So we can go and look at what is actually living in the environment and get some information about the actual environmental quality. And the great thing about a certain type of uh, algae, the, the diatoms, is that they leave fossil materials in the sedimentary record. They have cell walls that are diagnostic and that we can go back uh, through those sediment intervals and identify the different species that live uh, in uh, the past. And those are diatoms? Yes, and the, the diatoms are one group of the algae that ha are uh, unique in that they have a silica cell wall, basically a, a cell wall made of glass. So they're resistant to dissolving and breakage and so on, and they end up uh, preserving in the sedimentary record over time. Okay. So what I have here, this is just one prepared slide. Uh, to isolate these diatom cell walls in the sediments, um, we digest them in a strong acid that gets rid of all the organic stuff that's in these sediments and it leaves these diatom cell walls behind that we can then go and examine microscopically to uh, determine what the species assemblages are in the sediments. Okay. And here I'm using um, standard light microscopy at, at uh, a thousand times magnification and we use a method called oil immersion where we add a drop of highly refractive oil to the slide and without getting into the details of the physics behind it by adding the oil it gets rid of that air space between our sample and the lenses and that really increases our resolution. So I am going to turn on the screen here so you can see it okay. as well see what I'm seeing. Okay. So right away there's one huge diatom in our field of view. It's a centric diatom called stephanodiscus which represents high nutrient condition. And that's something I, because we study these so much we look at some of these we know immediately what it's telling us about uh, environmental condition. Here's another one called cyclotella. And everything you see in here um, for the most part are the remains of diatoms and so we scan transects along these slides and count what we find and based on the abundances of the different species we can get environmental information. It's uh, rather statistically intense but that is the short of the story mm -hmm, too, mm -hmm. as we actually look at the numbers that we find. Oh yeah, there's all kinds How of many diatoms are, are, are are there? Or, uh, the great thing about the diatoms as indicators of condition is that there are literally thousands of species we could potentially find and each one of those species has its own environmental preference so we can get a lot of information and even just scanning around in here uh, there are the obvious really big pretty ones but there are all sorts of other ones like this Nitsia is another so those are all diatoms? diatoms. Yes. Are those uh, we see other remains these are the scales of another type of algae called the chrysophytes, which I haven't talked about. Um, but those are uh, also diagnostic remains that we can analyze um, for. That's a species called Asterionella, which is very common up here in northern Minnesota. There's another one of those naviculoid diatoms. And you notice how each species is very different looking. So lots of diagnostic information that allows us to specifically identify what species it is. Mm -hmm.